is um, uh, an associate dean at the National Chongqing University in uh, in Taiwan, in uh, Minxiong. It's the local town, uh, one of the very top universities in Taiwan. Uh, you may know that he has had um, tremendous experience in the field of media. Uh, chair for the Foundation for Excellent Journalism Award. He was president and CEO of public uh, television service in Taiwan. President of the Central News Agency. General manager of uh, Taiwan Television Enterprise. Uh, his um, life also touched Australia because you were president and editor-in-chief of the Independence Daily, which was a Mandarin language newspaper in Australia in the 1990s, president of the Independent Evening Post in Taiwan, uh, and you write very well, as I see from a, a piece that was sent to me uh, through the grapevine, uh, and we welcome you to Shady uh, and here to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor King. Mr. Chin, uh, Mr. Chen, everyone here, good afternoon. Uh, it's really uh, it's my pleasure to have this opportunity to talk about the March 18 movement, uh, also called the Sunflower Movement, happened last year in Taiwan. Why this movement is significant is because it represents and we put the milestone in Taiwan's democratic development. And it provides meaningful experiences in practice of democracy. So uh, my presentation will, uh, will be divided into three parts. The first part, I will talk about uh, theory and the concept of uh, on the, the relationship between new media and the social movement, and the relationship between new media and the public sphere. Secondly, uh, I will talk about the March 18 occupation of Taiwan's parliament movement. Its background, the cause of the event, its impact, and the Taiwan's emerging new media. Next, I will uh, discuss the implication and the significance of Taiwan's March 18 movement. And uh, finally, a conclusion. Uh, I will make my presentation short. Okay. Uh, some, uh, I think some of you may be already familiar with uh, the concept of uh, about new media, uh, which developed recently by Castells, uh, Livro, Bennett, or Sigler. But let's give a brief introduction about some important ones which are relevant to today's talk. Uh, I'm not good at speaking English, but I try my best. Um, let's start with Livro's research. Livro, Categorizes alternative and activist new media into five genres, including culture jamming, alternative computing, participatory journalism, mediated mobilization, and common knowledge. According to Livro's research, the mediated mobilization type of new media has a close relationship with social movement because it concerns the essence and the distribution of the power in the community and the society, and the strive to promote radical and the participatory democracy. I think uh, the attitude moment mobilization and the participatory journalism, these two, kind, two types of media uh, will be the focus of today's talk. Uh, second scholar, I will uh, introduce is Castell's concept. Castell recognizes <coughs> that all the network social movements ignore political parties, distrust the media, did not recognize any leadership, 
and they rejected all formal organization relying on the internet and the local assemblies for collective debate and the decision making. The common characteristics of the network social movement include network <coughs> in multiple forms, being local and global at the same time, going viral, deliberating in an autonomous space to achieve the transition from orange to hope, highly self-reflective and rarely programmatic. Uh, all these characteristics will be discussed later uh, when we compare to March 18 movement. In order to counter the institutional pub public space for deliberation, Castells proposed the concept of hybrid space. He believed that social movements need to carve out a new public space that is not limited to the internet but makes itself visible in the places of social life. This is why they occupy urban space and the symbolic buildings, like uh, Sunflower Movement and the Umbrella Movement. This, uh, so, hybrid space basically incorporates the physical space with internet social networks. From there, they can engage in interactions with each other and build up and immediate, immediate community. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, from many social movements occurring after the 2008 global financial crisis, Bennett and Sigerberg uh, is the uh, last two researchers I want to mention. Uh, they propose three ideal types of contentious actions. The first one is organizationally brokered collective action. Collective action covers traditional contentious action. The second ones and the third ones all refer to connective action. Both founded on individualized content, sharing in online social network. The main difference between these two is how and to what, what extent organizations Play their roles. In the second type, organizations still utilize community technologies to carry out participatory management and objective, objective coordination. Now let's look at the new media and uh, public spheres. In terms of public spheres, according to the findings of many studies, the key difference between the new type of communication networks <coughs> and the traditional communication networks in the digital age is the information equality, which is characterized by the public collaboration. It has opened up a brand new network public sphere. Within the sphere, the public connects to each other to, through community networks and is able to engage in information sharing and the view exchanges on a variety of public spheres. Uh, different from Habermas' view, uh, Habermas focus on, I think, is uh, one public sphere. On the NS, uh, oh sorry, Habermas will point out, I should introduce Habermas' concept first. On the analysis of media power, Habermas points out that on the one hand, the media can be public forums to promote rational communication among citizens. But on the other hand, the media can also be manipulated by powerful political and business establishments, which prevent public spheres from being becoming an ideal context for dialogue. Uh, different from Habermas' view, many public sphere scholars point out that any society is composed of multiple and competing publics. Therefore, the society is formed by multiple public spheres founded on diverse values and interests, not single and comprehensive public spheres, like Habermas point out. So, uh, after my uh, 
I finished the talk about the concept of theories of uh, 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 the relation between uh, new media and the public spheres or relationship between new media and the social movement. Uh, then I will introduce uh, the uh, background or course of events of the March 18th occupation of Taiwan's parliament. Uh, first, background. Okay. Uh, over the years, the government of Taiwan and China has tried to normalize their relationship by strengthening their economic tie. So, in June 2013, the representatives of Taiwan and China signed a close trade service trade agreement, we call it CSSTA, in Shanghai. The March 18 movement was ignited over the review process of the CSFTA in Taiwan's legislative Yuan. Uh, legislative Yuan is Taiwan's parliament. Despite the continuing boycott by the opposition party, the ruling party, Kuomintang, unilaterally announced the completion of the agreement review process on March 17, 2014. This democratic action of Kuomintang sparked a strong debate, a strong protest from dissenting civic organizations. The next evening, March 18, protesters pushed through the police barricades and stormed into the legislative end assembly hall. I will show some uh, pictures for you. Uh, this is the scene. Uh, taken on uh, inside the uh, legislative plan assembly hall after protesters had had the control of the building. Uh, this movement was uh, also named sunflower movement because protesters used sunflowers as the symbol of this movement. Yeah, this uh, police. Okay. After the legislative began occupied by the protesters, the public congregated and even camped outside of the building. You can see here, and the nearby area. Uh, that's. Uh, uh, I think that's the part of uh, 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 another part of uh, legislative began. Uh, they, they want to show their support. Yeah, this the theme of the camp. Yeah, some professors uh, conduct conducted their lessons, uh, their classes on democracy and the social justice in the protesting area. Uh, on March twenty third. Uh, you can see the picture here. Protesters stormed into the executive yen. Executive yen is the highest, uh, Taiwan's highest uh, administrative body. But uh, you see, it's a strong protest. Here, mm -hmm. uh, police use strong forces to carry up them out. Yeah, here, another picture from another thing. Uh, many members of the protesters were severely injured uh, when police carried them out of the building. Uh, already with uh, several hundreds of thousands of people uh, was held on March 30th, yeah, this is the biggest event uh, in this movement. Uh, I'm the, one of the members here, and the speaker here. Uh, let's see the impact. <coughs> the ruling party, Kuomintang, was forced to postpone the adoption of the agreement in order to placate this massive 
severe resistance movement. This event of protestation also resulted in a direct impact on the local election held at the end of last year. The ruling party, Kuomintang, was severely defeated in the election and lost most of its local seats. But uh, for the pity, uh, Hong Kong uh, didn't have any uh, truly democratic election. Uh, let's talk about the new media and the March 18 movement here. March 18 movement could be seen as a continuation and a turning point of Taiwan's emerging network social movement. To a certain extent, the March 18 movement was a product of network connections. After the incident, students and the citizens utilized a variety of digital tools essential for information dissemination to call for action and to spread their <coughs> message. I think the young people all know uh, the digital tools. Yeah. Uh, let me name some of you. Uh, here, I, I have some information for this. Uh, these tools included social media such as Facebook and the Twitter, electronic bulletin board, PTT, and the mobile app line. In addition, various, various live vi video and audio platforms broadcast every action inside and outside of the legislative union directly to the people of Taiwan. Okay, this allowed people, everyone who were, was interested in learning about the state of the event during the movement period. Okay, now uh, I'll show some picture for you. Uh, this is the, uh, a student, yeah. Uh, he, he was made, she was making a live report uh, in English and uh, she put this report on CNN I report. Mm -hmm. I think many people would, would know what is a CNN I report. It's a global platform uh, for citizen journeys. Okay, so CNN used these reports to broadcast their first news. Yeah, uh, it's uh, the first live broadcast inside the legislative union. Just iPad and uh, yeah, the slippers. Okay, yeah, everybody can do it. Yeah, uh, this picture shows it's a tent for uh, many students reporters from uh, News E Forum, which, uh, which was an, uh, originally was an announced investment, announced, uh, an event announcement website page of uh, National Taiwan University Department of Journalism. And uh, they changed it. There are I think there are more than 90 students reporting directly from the protest side to the public. They want to, they devoted themselves to truthfully delivering the message uh, from the protest side yeah, to the public. And uh, they produce, produce around 1,234 pieces of reporting during the movement period. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay, uh, one of the <coughs> most talk event uh, during the March 18 movement is the fundraising, the advertising fundraising, uh, which was held on a crowdfunding platform called uh, Flying V. The organization raised uh, 200,000 US dollars in less than three hours. Uh, the record, I think uh, the, the amount and the, the speed uh, set the record in Taiwan. It's the, the ad advertisement praised in New York Times. Yeah, uh, I think they want to, to tell the truth 
and the appear of March 18 movement. Okay, after the March 18 incident, traditional media still attempted to define the event, but the effort of trying to put things into a specific frame was more or less influenced and drawn by information flow produced by new media. The traditional media had lost its final word status, its monopoly of interpretation. The most significant outcome is that many citizens and independent media had grown into important speakers in this multiple public space. Yeah, it's an interesting picture here. Uh, you can see the same thing. Oh, I, I don't know who, who, who would have shot it. Okay, uh, here, which I, I, can, I think everybody knows, yeah, but that's his fault, yeah. Uh, here, uh, some members of the public put post it notes on the satellite news gallery van to express their discontent with uh, mainstream TV news media. Uh, and news reports. Yeah, it's it's an evidence uh, the public no longer trusts the traditional media as their uh, news sources. Besides the online mobilization campaign, I, I want to say there were many civic and social groups behind the movement. There's a reason why I asked uh, Professor Chen uh, uh, at lunch. Some of these groups originated from social and academic organizations established earlier, but the majority of them were a variety of dissenting student associations, civil groups, and the social activist organizations only surfacing recently. Okay, let's talk about the implication and the significance of the March 18 movement. Is it open wine in the new battle? Yeah, that's the question. According to my research, the change in the communication ecosystem happened during the March 18 movement. It's not just a re renovation, renovation of technology, but also a representation of the social and the cultural change. I think they influence each other. Independent media and the citizen journalism create a much more important role in this new information ecosystem. Uh, compare the March 18 movement to network social movements defined by Castells. Uh, I want to compare uh, the concept which was defined by Castells and the reality of March 18 uh, movement. The former exhibits many characteristics of the later, but civic groups which Castells does not emphasize too much in his theory still play a an important role in the process of social movement development. Uh, another point, like other network social movement, the March 18 movement constituted a hybrid form of communication and mobilization space by connecting a symbolic <coughs> building with internet social networks. But interesting place here. However, in Taiwan's situation, the physical space was partially controlled by the police broadcast. Therefore, the space was not completely integrated and open. I think that's the difference between two, two kinds of situations. Or uh, Taiwan's March 18 movement uh, with another network social movement. From the March 18 movement, we could see both traditional collective action via organizational coordination and the collective action via new media networks. It echoes the observations made by Bennett and the Silver about the social movements happening in Arab countries, Spain, Spain and the US. They have the same situation. Over the years, Taiwan's network public have changed the way news is produced and disseminated, and then further created alternative public spheres. The March 18 movement can be seen as the latest note for the change. Taiwan's traditional commercial media have distinct political orientation, so 
the phenomenon of politics and the media forming alliances is quite common. That's the difference between Taiwan and another country. It also complicates the interactions and the relationships among um, nine independent media, citizen journalism, and the traditional media. Uh, I would like to uh, to to give a, a example to explain this kind of situation. And uh, here, for example. There are some traditional media which are in opposition to the ruling party. They usually echo the views of independent media and the citizen journalists. In this case, the traditional media enhance the new media's influence, but in turn, new media are facing the greater challenge on the nature <coughs> of their independence. Okay, here comes the conclusion. Um, yeah, I point out several points. I want to make it sh short. As a social movement pursuing social justice, Taiwan March 18 movement undoubted, <coughs> undoubtedly has its own flaws in decision making and strategic operations. In the same measure as a social movement pursuing media justice, the movement also <coughs> revealed the gap between ideas and reality in its halting attempts at constitution tilting the digital commons. However, after the March 18 movement, the digital commons should no longer be a dream out of reach. There's a lot of work to be done to move from digital natives to digital citizens. Likewise, there is also a lot of effort to be paid to advance from media enclosure to digital commons. Without a doubt, the global communication revolution for building digital commons is not complete. <coughs> but if we set our mind, the revolution continues. Uh, before I finish my presentation, uh, here is the uh, final note on the relationship between March 18 movement and the uh, Hong Kong's umbrella movement. In fact, uh, in recent years, uh, there are so many independent journalists, independent journalists or social movement activists and uh, scholars or students, uh, Alex mentioned uh, this morning. They, uh, they, they have more frequent and extensive interaction and uh, communication from both sides. So uh, I think the foreign picture will show some, uh, some result of this, this kind of communication. Uh, <laughs> some people have laughed at this photo. Uh, this picture was taken on, on the uh, on Taiwan's March 18 movement, and, and on the protest side, there are several Hong Kong, Hong Kong or Hong Kong people or Hong Kongese. I don't know. I I, check it. I don't know what 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 term you want to use. Hong Kong Hong Kong me. Hong Kong Hong me. This work. Yeah, several people from Hong Kong. Hong Kong Hong me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are showing up at the protest, protesting sign. Yeah. And they say, uh, the poster say, I am Hong Kong Gong Ming. Uh, I'm against trade agreement. Yeah, that's the first picture. Okay, the second picture here. Yeah. You know, yeah, okay. <laughs> Why are you talking? Uh, this uh, uh, picture was this picture was taken on the uh, protest side of uh, uh, Hong Kong Sunflower Movement. Uh, yeah, the poster says, "I'm Taiwanese. Taiwan support Hong Kong." Yeah, is it okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. The third one. Uh, it, it's a little bit complicated. The last one was taken at the Freedom Square uh, in Taiwan. 
where several thousands or hundreds of people got together during the umbrella movement to show their support for Hong Kong's demand for democracy. The poster on the right says, Today's Hong Kong, here, tomorrow's Taiwan. I think uh, it's in price. Taiwan and Hong Kong has the same fate. Same fate. Thank you for your reason. Anyone from anywhere can just hold their phone and you know. Um, yeah, sure. Start, yeah, important yeah. yeah. stuff. Um, how can we tackle the issue of um, the, um, looking at whether the sources are legitimate or not, and whether news reports are you know facts or made up? <coughs> because it's a, quite a difficult thing. To do. I so. So, uh, so your question is about the, um, the fashion, the truth of the reporting. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I, I, I need you, I, I will ask you for your help. And uh, um, that, that's a difficult question. Uh, it's, anyway, it's hard to differentiate what's the truth. But you know, if you live in a dominant uh, public sphere. Uh, uh, this kind of situation, you, you, you just can have one explanation for this kind of event. But if you are a citizen journalist, you can use any digital tools to voice out your voice, even if it's your subjective viewpoint, or even just what you see in in the part, some part of the uh, movement. But it's your evidence. Is your what you see or what you thought? I think it's most it's really important for anybody to share. Uh, if you have media literacy, you can differentiate. This guy always tell the truth. This guy always create the rumor. I think it's not different. It's not difficult for anybody to to differentiate the, the truth or not. Uh, is it your question? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Another. <laughs> uh, what I suggest is that we take, because I'm a Democrat, we take three, all <laughs> three, and just briefly, if you could say your name, and then um, uh, if, if you're happy, then you reply to all three. Okay, okay. Uh, Hi, my name is Winnie. Um, I'm interested to know whether or not you, know, you think the, um, it's a bit of a generation thing that. Uh, the older generation tend to trust the traditional media, mm -hmm. and then you've got you know, the newer generation, you know, relying on you know um, all these new media, and because you know there's a lot of political influence, you know, on the um, on the traditional media, then you you know the movement is almost like you know there's a bit of disparity. Then you have the older generation not so much supporting, you know, the younger generation. Okay, uh, very much. And then, uh, Giovanni. Hi, Giovanni Norria from SDN. I have one comment and a question. The comment is that you, you mentioned Taiwan as a, as a bit of a particular case because uh, the media were politicized, right? And I think it's, uh, maybe it's Taiwan is a particular case, but I'm Italian, I come from Italy, and we had a long history of politi yes. politicized uh, um, the media. And in fact, the same things happened in Italy, more or less a few years ago, when for too many years we had too many, um, uh, too unreliable mainstream media, and therefore there was a new movement coming out from that, before the Indianos in Spain, which is uh, uh, the, um, 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 the five-star movement led by a comedian and now a politician. And uh, the question is, 
First of all, I think it would be good for you if you don't know that to have a, just to have a look at the way in which that movement raised arise from uh, a small group to a, a movement which acquired in the last uh, election 25% of votes in uh, the national election. And the question is whether or not that kind of, of progress, what you're speaking, is foreseeable in Taiwan, for instance, where you have, uh, first and foremost, a, mo a movement which is a protest movement a new, a new uh, kind of understanding of politics outside of mainstream, and then you have uh, a formation of a kind of consciousness, of politi political consciousness, and then the willingness to become a, 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 a maker of changes through political process. That's one question. The second question, the last question I asked, sorry about that. I said one, is that it's actually two, two is, uh, um, I'm going to now, uh, <laughs> is uh, whether, whether or not the, um, Oh yeah, the, the comment to the last comment. The, I mean, I think this seems to me, I'm off pro digital and media, but it seems to me that there is a, a tendency, especially in this kind of environment, a tendency in thinking too much in kind of, of uh, um, dichotomies. Old media, mistrust. New media, trust. Well, it's not so true. And it's not so easy to discriminate between the truth and, and, uh, and um, the fake news, as, as you were mentioned before. So I think it's important to say that. Question referred to the generation gap. Um, I don't know. Is it a gap? Uh, for me, uh, I didn't read watch a newspaper. Uh, you know, for me, like LKK, uh, we also say this means uh, the senior person. Uh, so many senior people in Taiwan they didn't read the newspaper every day now. So they also use. Uh, uh, they also know or also learn the new message or information from the web or use their mobile device. So in Taiwan, I think the generation gap will be short, make shorter, will be shorter. But uh, yeah, of course, it's still a gap. Uh, young people, they most of them, they didn't want to read newspaper now, or including traditional media like uh, TV stations. They, they sometimes I think I don't know. They got the information from where. So this, uh, but anyway, I think social media or uh, another citizen journalist platform will provide enough information for them. Uh, probably in, in other countries there will be a big gap, uh, but in Taiwan I think the gap is smaller and the getting smaller and smaller. Uh, Refer to another uh, the second. People, uh, second guest here, 
the question about uh, politicized, I mean the media, politicized, politicized media, uh, is really uh, a complicated phenomenon. Uh, in Taiwan, I just said it, uh, earlier, it's a very complicated situation. Uh, we can't just refer to say, uh, the old tradition me media, uh, they all are per politicized media. But most of the people in Taiwan, they know, they, they really know which television station or which, which newspaper were pro, I we say blue or green. It means ruling party or the opposition party. So um, it's really a, a, a complicated question. So it's also the, uh, the gap or the barricade for uh, Taiwan's democratic development. Uh, in other countries, I, I don't know how to uh, answer your question right now, but uh, le later probably we can discuss it. Uh, refer to the third question. Yeah, sure. Uh, we, we just heard Taiwan my nation. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I, I just uh, written a report uh, just one year ago yeah, about your uh, question. Um, I do think uh, the, tri uh, the, the, uh, the network or the internet or a mobile device will help to improve the democracy in China. But it's still, uh, some scholars say, it's still uh, an official democratic platform, an official, an official democracy. If you want to change this kind of situation, I mean, from Official, our official democracy, democracy to official democracy is still a great gap. So Taiwan can play some uh, a, a, a little bit important, not very important, uh, role in change or in in this kind of situation. We do think if uh, we can use the uh, social media like uh, QQ or uh, Facebook, yeah, we can. Uh, we can learn each other, and uh, we can express our viewpoint or our information. And uh, if Taiwanese know they, how to use this kind of digital mobile, uh, digital tool to help to improve the situation in China, I do, I do think there are so many ways to do. So uh, that's what my answer. So another skill and all. We don't have much time. We can discuss later. I think probably let's discuss it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.